Live and Direct. Today I have a very special guest. I'm going to let him introduce himself. Go ahead and let everybody know who I have the great pleasure of speaking with today. Hey, Coach, this is Michael Inahosa, Superintendent of Dallas ISD. Thank you for having me. Hey, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Hey, uh, first question, what everybody may want to know, uh, give us a little bit about your uh, your background. Uh, excuse me, give me a little bit about your uh, where you grew up in your educational journey through, through our DIC. Where did you grow up at, uh, Doc? Well, I, I was born in Mexico, then we lived in Lubbock for a few years, but I actually we moved to Dallas when I was in the second grade. We lived in West Dallas for a little bit, then we actually moved to Oak Cliff. And when I grew up in, in north part of Oak Cliff and then uh, made my way through the system there. Actually uh, learned to love basketball when I was in the eighth grade. Uh, and I played on the ninth grade basketball team at Griner, which lost to Spence in 1971 in the city uh, championship game. Um, and then I went, uh, we moved across the street. So I ended up going to Sunset High School um, and then I left, um, I went to college and went to Texas Tech and I played a lot of, my basketball team won all university on the intramurals uh, basketball program there. And then uh, then I came back to Dallas and J.D. Mayo and I were two of the youngest head basketball coaches in the history of Dallas. I was the head basketball coach at Adamson um, uh, when I was about 26 years old. So that's kind of my journey through the school district and um, sports have always been a big part of my life. Oh yeah, and again, just want to let everybody know, uh, today's topic is administrators influencing sports. We're gonna talk about what he just got through discussing, uh, Dr. Hinojosa, uh, his background in sports, specifically basketball. We also gonna talk about uh, towards the end, his great support for the student athletes uh, that he supports in DISD. Uh, next question, uh, Doc, uh, what role did athletes play in your life growing up? How important was playing sports to you? Sports was my savior. Um, there were a lot of students that got in trouble that I grew up with because, um, you know, we didn't have other opportunities. When I didn't, uh, when my football coach wouldn't let me come out after the federal judge integrated the schools, you know, I really didn't have anywhere else to go. I could have joined a gang because I got a lot of invitations growing up in Oak Cliff. But instead, I, I started going and playing basketball. I played basketball all over West Dallas and Oak Cliff. I went to Northampton Recreation Center, Keys Park, Redford, you know, uh, Cummings, Beckley Saner, Kid Springs, <laughs> and anywhere I could find a, a round ball, learn how to play ball. And uh, it saved my life and it gave me a purpose for being. And that's why I was so indebted to it. Even after I um, quit coaching, I, I, I became a referee. So I wanted to stay in the game. Um, and then after, you know, we moved and I became a superintendent, I couldn't do that anymore. So then I coached my son's baseball teams. And now that, I, that my sons are all gone, uh, now I play golf. And so to me, individual and team sports have always been a part of my DNA. And that's why I love going to high school ball games, especially basketball and baseball. I go to football games too, but I really love basketball and, and baseball since they were a big part of my life. And um, everything that I, you know, that I do is involving sports. And yeah, and I just want to tell everybody that I can attest that uh, Dr. Hinojosa is a big basketball fan. Uh, even I remember I bumped into him on uh, two occasions at, at some games. I saw that game. Uh, I think uh, South Oak Cliff was playing Kimball for the third place uh, uh, for the third for the uh, uh, district seating or whatever. They were tied, I think, for first place. And then I also saw you at the playoff game. I think uh, Carter was playing Lindale. Way in front, I looked up. I said, "Man, there goes the superintendent." So I see everywhere. And then I was, I was great. I was uh, uh, fortunate enough to bump into you down in San, down in San Antonio, and we talked about having you. So once again, I, I definitely appreciate you. I can tell folks you are definitely a big supporter of your uh, teams and uh, student athletes. You most definitely are. Uh, next question, Doc. Uh, keeping in mind of what you just told me, what athletes meant to you in your upbringing, uh, what are some of the steps that are being taken by you and your team to provide the same support? And it's a two-part question. How important is that to you? Oh, it's extremely important to me because it changed my life. And, you know, I think we also had a great example this year. We had the Pinkston girls go all the way to state. And yes. they haven't yes. always had a legacy of success. But with a great coach and a good system and good motivation, and now they're going to have a brand new gym, I think it's very important. Well, another thing we've discovered is that people are really excited for Dallas kids to be able to play in their own gym. So right now, most of the schools have their own competition gym. We've made a decision that even the ones that don't, we're going to help them get theirs. You know, 
during the playoffs, a lot of the suburbs now wanted to play at Sock, at Carter, at Hillcrest. And so we, we've discovered that it's great for the kids to have that opportunity. Also, it, it, you know, I've been around through AAU ball and, and in select baseball and by training students, you know, outside of school hours and those being involved in those programs, it helps them be part of something positive. And so I think it's very important. Uh, our athletic department is now trying to come up with some opportunities for elementary kids to be involved in more extracurricular activities and learn the sciences of playing sports. Some sports, just because you're an athlete, you can be good. And that would be basketball or maybe even football. But some of these sports like golf and baseball, there's so much technical training in certain positions in football. If you don't have that technical training, you're going to be behind. So we're making a commitment. One of the goals that we've always had since I came back is that we want every student involved in an extracurricular activity. And for many kids, it's sports. Some kids, it might be esports. For other kids, it might be chess. But, inter but uh, competitive sports is something that turns a lot of students on and we need to make sure we, we find a way. I've also been impressed recently with how improved some of our baseball teams have become since I was here before, but they've been working real hard at that improvement. Oh, I would tell you, I, I definitely tell you that that's definitely something that's important, having the kids uh, being involved, you know, being an educator, teacher, matter of fact, in DISD. I definitely tell you, the kids just being involved with something. Uh, funny thing is, Dr. my son, he's 11 and he's probably five foot two. Of course, everybody always teased me about him playing basketball. Really has no interest in sports, but he understands the game. He can tell you about every position, every player. You know, he plays that that PlayStation, what have you. So I told I told him he may, it's always a place in sports, even if he's not bouncing the ball or catching the ball. He may be sitting on the map expense to be an analytic coach, or what have you. You know, get a coach. You, know, you got people get paid to do that, or what have you. He may end up being a you know the vice president of operations or something. So, but like you say, just keeping them involved, whether it be like you say uh, chess or whatever it may be, not maybe necessarily be a, a you know, physical contact sport. You're most definitely correct. Just keep the kids involved. You, you're correct on that. Uh, next question, uh, Doc, uh, uh, as you say, in your experience as a teacher, coach, and administrator, uh, how important how important, are athletic, how important do you think athletics are to players in the lower income area or at rich students? How important do you think athletics are? It's, you know, businesses tell us all the time that they want smart kids, but they also want people who can communicate, they can work in teams, they can be part of something great that's more than themselves. And sports teaches you all of that. And some guys, some players are very talented, but they're not team players. They won't make it uh, <laughs> uh, in life if they're not a team player, because they won't be able to keep a job. So, and, and sometimes you may think you're more talented than another student, another ball player, but for some reason, the match is better somewhere else. And those are the things that you learn. And, and that's what the business people, they want people that can think, but they also want people that can get along and have a common goal. And in sports, you, usually the common goal is to win. You want to be competitive, but you also want to win. Winning success breeds success. And, and, and you've got to get better. And even if you don't win, what, did you put it all out there on the court? Did you put it all out there on the field? And that's what people in business want. So it'll help you. It's helped me for the rest of my life that I was in sports. And if you notice, a lot of former, a lot of principals are former coaches. A lot of superintendents are former coaches because we learned about teamwork in sports and we learned how to compete and we learned not to make excuses while we're out there trying to improve our systems. Oh, without a doubt. And I, I'm, I'm going to brag a little bit. I played at Skylar High School for J.D. Mayo. And you know, Coach Mayo's big on that. And when I still talk to him this day, he always tells me a few things he told me. He said, Coach, life is all about relationships and communication. He always used to tell us that. He always used to you know, tell us that, you know, it's, it's about how you carry yourself. Sometimes I know the other kids, the other schools just tease us because you have to dress up in a shirt and tie and things like that. And you have to be clean and safe. He probably get on me today about wearing this beard because I couldn't wear that with him. But he always told us that, you know, we were the cream of the crop. He's, he's providing us. To be successful later on in life, that's, that's the appearance that you got to have when you're going in for a job. You have to look the part. He always tells me, he said, Coach, you got to look the part, talk the part, and be able to do the part. So what you just said, just touched on that, how important the athletics are. Uh, you know, let me also add something while we're talking about that, because my coach ahead. just had a big impact on me. My high school coach said, you know, Jose, you're short, but you're slow, too. 
I said, oh, coach, that's very inspiring. He goes, no, he goes, you're the smartest kid I ever coached. You're going to be somebody. It's just not well, maybe not college basketball, but there's going to be many opportunities. And he was right. Yeah. And, and, and he, so coaches inspire students, especially if, if you don't have a lot of other things to do. You're around your coach most of your time, most of your uh, free time, and, and that really helps. And he, the fact that he believes and he saw my brain power and he saw how I could work with people that really helped me just like it helped you with your high school coach. Oh, oh, it did. I tell people all the time, the most uh, satisfying feeling to get from a coach is not how many kids, you know, that uh, got scholarships or playing professionally or what have you. It's, it's when you uh, bump into some of your old uh, student athletes, Doc and they are so happy to see you, but they're productive young men. You know, they're fathers, you know, they're, they're, they're role models themselves. And they tell you, you know, how you had, you know, some type of influence on that. You know, they, they may laugh about how you get on them or whatever the case may be, but but that's the most uh, important thing. And that's the thing, you know, about, you know, coaching. I do miss, you know, it's their part there. But uh, what you said, that's, that's what's all about coaching. You're supposed to be there to, to influence, you know, to have a positive influence on, on these young men and women that we come in contact with. Because at the end of the day, you got the best job in the world, you know, work, working with young people. I will always tell people that. Uh, next question, Doc. Uh, what role has athletics, what role do you think athletics play in uh, youth during the pan in during this uh, crazy pandemic, uh, you know, with the de uh, deteriorating social skills, depression on the rise, the large population of virtual learners that would not participate, how important do you think uh, athletics have been or or is? Well, it was kind of scary, quite honest, Coach. You know, we didn't know what we didn't know, and then of course, um, so we kind of hesitated at first. Well, safety was number one. But once we realized that it was going to be okay and everybody was going to follow the rules, it was very important, you know, uh, for students to be out there with their peers and with their coaches. And the worst thing we needed was students getting, you know, locked up inside their house and not being able to participate. And I'm very proud that we made it through this whole pandemic and we had very few serious incidents um, mm -hmm. regarding uh, the safety of the students. But that's because everybody followed the protocols. Everybody did what they were supposed to do. I wish we'd have learned some of those things earlier so we could have opened up things a little bit more, but in, you can't second guess yourself. You gotta do, make the best decision with the information that you have, but it was so critical. Even with some of our music folks, it took them a while to get back because the instruments blow out a lot of you know, liquids and stuff. So we had to even hold them back. And you know, the, the music is also part of uh, of sports. Uh, and so we just learned a lot, but I am proud that everybody made it work and we've, we've made it through the worst part. And now we see the light at the end of the tunnel. And we expect that by next year, we'll be close to normal. It'll never go back 100% normal, but I think we're, we're, we've made a lot of progress and I'm proud of everyone for following the rules. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, hey, last question. This is the most important question. I spoke to a lot of folks and I was excited about you know, interviewing with you and, uh, and I tell people all the time, I get this question, I'm going to ask this question. And then I, uh, the question I want to ask you that everybody will know, how other your leadership that uh, basketball teams in Dallas ISD have been so consistently successful? What is it? Is it the uh, you know, uh, great job that your staff do, you know, uh, 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 Dr. Salinas and MT and Scotty Jackson do in the, in the athletic department, or is it the principals, or, uh, you know, is it administra the administration? Or is it the coaches? You know, do we just have great athletes? Or is the combination of all? Because I get that question all the time. Believe it or not, Doc, I remember when I was coaching and I, and I was fortunate enough to interview in different places. I interviewed for some jobs and all day and I had still a few times. And, and believe it or not, that's the question that I, that I got. They was like, they was like, coach, come from Dallas. I'm like, coach, every year I look at it, it's a team from Dallas, ISD, the Center State Champion. Man, what are you guys doing, man? What, what, what are y'all doing? They seriously want to know, you know, they, there's something magic what they were doing. So can you please share the secret that everybody wants to know, Doc? <laughs> well, it's all of the above, and everybody has a piece of the success. But I have to say, it's um, when you separate it all out, is we got great kids and we got great coaches, and okay. and we know how to compete, and we make it a priority. And even though some of our kids may not have all the resources, you know, it just takes tenacity and the fact that Dallas has had all these great recreation centers and even you know we could all go play ball somewhere and the fact that we had great coaches who were teachers of, of the game and made us strong and it, it, we've always been able to compete and we will forever and now that everybody's getting their own competition gym 
I hope that, you know, some of our schools that have struggled a little bit can make it back. And, you know, Carter was known for football, but now Carter is known for basketball too. So, there are, <laughs> you know, Madison's always been great in basketball, Sock and Kimball, but we need to get more schools in, to get up there with the, the Lincolns. And, uh, you know, Pinkston has some great potential and a lot of schools do. Uh, and you just need to get you a small group of kids that are committed and a great coach. And you, you know, my last year to coach, we won 22 games in a row. And the last game we lost was to Hillcrest and they won state that year. So wow. even Adamson was very competitive that one yeah. year. So yeah. if you just get the right kind of kids with the right kind of coach and we provide all the supports and you have a chance for success. And I think that, you know, you go back to the Ellis Davis of the world, you go back to all the great coaches that have been in Dallas. Um, you know, those are the people that started this legacy and our coaches now have not let that legacy die. We still have a few old, uh, old school coaches <laughs> like Coach Bays that have been around for a long time. <laughs> Coach Graham just finally retired. Yeah. But, but we have that connection to the past and we honor the past and we appreciate the past. So, but it's really, if you boil it down, is we've got great kids and great coaches and everybody else supports that. And, and you know what, before I get, get you out here, I just want to one, one thing, just tell everybody, uh, just the series of working in the district that how great supportive of uh, the athletic department always was, like you are now, very, you know, personable, you know, could always call you and, you know, speak to you or what have you. But like you said, we always come up a lot of great, uh, the older coaches, you know, that seriously mentored you, you know, taught me the way, wasn't afraid to tell, you know, secrets and, you know, what they what they had to share. Because when I came up, I started coaching in the DIC in 2002 at Carter High School with, with uh, Rob Wright. And then you had guys like that. And then Coach Bishop, you know, who retired. Coach uh, Allen, I think, who uh, was uh, was on your staff when you coached, what have you. So guys like that, you know, who always, you know, uh, uh, shared ideas with me. That's why people don't – people sometimes wonder, like, Coach, you know, you're able to, you know, uh, uh, talk, talk to these coaches and these kids – and things like this, how you able to do this is because I have this relationship with these coaches, with these guys. Every time I bump the coach Bishop over there at PC Cobb Stadium, we have a 20, 30 minute conversation just about life and basketball. So I think, like you said, just the environment that you and the climate that you and your staff build, I think leads to the success. I, I really do because people are comfortable. We know as long as we come in, we do our job, we care about the kids that we're going to get you guys support. Let me finish it off by saying, we we compete against each other. We all want to, yeah, win, we but we all also collaborate and help each other, and that's why we've been successful over the long haul. Because once we get out of district, then you know, <laughs> they're the enemy. We, we fight each other inside, but then once we get out, we all cheer each other on all the way to state. It used to Probably. be in Austin. Now we have to go to San Antonio, but it's okay. <laughs> well, hey, uh, I appreciate I appreciate your time always, most definitely. Uh, guys, once again, uh, I had the great pleasure of speaking with the superintendent of Dallas Independent School District. Uh, guys, uh, this definitely uh, give me a give me a couple of days to show this. This definitely be up on my YouTube channel, and uh, you guys will be able to uh, get a chance to uh, check it out. Uh, Doc, I definitely tell Miss Rodriguez uh, that I got to get you and her uh, your shirt styles. Get y'all one of these Taylor Made Hoop T-shirts. I definitely appreciate your support. Uh, if you have any, if you have anything else to say, go ahead. No, thank you for doing this. And I appreciate everybody. And uh, it's really exciting to be part of this journey. So thank you. Hey, I appreciate you, Doc. Appreciate you. Thank you, dear. Thank you, guys. Yeah. All right. I'm going to get the record off. Get the record off. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's one of the